The biggest change for the service user, as far as I'm concerned, from the uh, document, the guidance document, is that the service user is going to be involved in the planning and assessment and evaluation of their own recovery. It states very, very clearly that the self-assessment teams will have a service user on the team. Well, the first thing I think is, I mean, I can speak from my own experience. When I came to mental health services, I had already been working in the mental health services in the area of care provision. When I came to the mental health services as a service user, the first thing I was looking for and that I needed was care. Now, the best, the guidance document is totally based on best practice, best care practices, both internationally and uh, nationally. So I think the area that it will immediately impact on the service user is going to be in the area of care. There's going to be access to information for the service user online to, to know, what, to know what, the, uh, what, what, what they're entitled to, if you like. Uh, it, it, from mental health services. I think that's, that's the area I would be personally very, very um, aware of that it's going to make a big difference, is the contentious area of rights. I think it's very important at some stage in a person's engagement with mental health services that they take ownership of their own life. The guidance document is a great, great help in doing this because I get information, I get uh, a whole load of support also as to what I can do. The benefits of this, the benefits of this process are that my dignity and my rights are going to be central and respected all the time in my engagement with the mental health services.